Hello, welcome back to Flit. Now we are on exothermic and endothermic reactions. So we have um, done a calculation okay, in the previous video on how enthalpy change our reaction looks like, okay, change in H. So this one is the uh, extension of it, just that now we are talking about uh, individual. Okay, we go into details, what are exo and endothermic. So if you recall, okay, uh, in a chemical reaction, uh, we are using AA and BB again, okay, because it's the easiest. So we have AA and BB to give us AB uh, molecules. Okay, if you recall, we use two different colors to um, describe them. So a green bond is between my two A atoms okay, to give us AA molecule. A pink bond holds my two B molecules together. And when I break them, okay, I have to form this new AB molecule. Okay, so I break the green bond, I break the pink bond to form two blue bonds. Okay, and in the case of exothermic reaction, what do I mean? It's basically heat taken in to break bonds, these two, to break these two bonds. For example, let's say when you add up the values, it's around um, 400 kilojoules per mole. Okay, uh, bond, sorry, heat taken in to break bonds less than the heat given out to form bonds. Okay, this is the definition of exothermic reaction. So, for example, if here is 400 kilojoules per mole, here can be 500 kilojoules per mole. Okay, and if you recall, change in H is taking the first part minus away the second part, which will result in a negative of 100 kilojoules per mole. Okay, okay hopefully this makes sense. So, let's re-examine the definition again. Heat taken in to break bonds, this one, 400 is less than the heat given out from forming bonds, 500. Okay, when I take away, it's negative 100, ju 100, ju 100 kilojoules per mole. So this value here, negative, okay, the negative sign just means the movement of energy. Negative means it moves away. Okay, imagine I have a cup here. Okay, this is where my reaction takes place, okay, in this cup. Okay, like a conventional styrofoam, styrofoam cup, for example. If this reaction takes place, it's an exothermic reaction, when it's done, okay, heat will be emitted out. Okay, so if I put my hands around this cup, okay, I hold it tightly, I can feel it being warm. Okay, and you might have some experience in that in your chemistry lab. Okay, that's because the that reactions you're talking about are exothermic. So negative means the heat is traveling away from the um, reaction site. Okay, in this case, it's a cup. And that's why heat is released into the surrounding via these orange arrows and temperature of the surrounding increases. Okay, and that's why when you put your hands around it even, okay, or when you touch the cup, it becomes warm because heat is being given off. This excess heat is being given off because of this reaction here. Okay, and you, now you understand why we have this minus sign is to denote the movement of the heat. So products formed in exothermic reaction have less energy than its reactants. Alright, this is a... Uh, just the definition of it. We'll, we'll talk more about this in the energy profile diagram later. So some examples of this exothermic reaction are combustion, okay, obviously, right, when you burn, for example, like uh, wood, okay, if you burn okay, at your fireplace, okay, some countries have fireplace, when you burn this uh, power of wood here, okay, what do you get? Okay, obviously you get a uh, warmth, right? So this is because the heat is traveling outwards. Okay, and that's why combustion is an exothermic reaction. What else? Neutralization, termite reaction. Okay, this is blast furnace, uh, respiration, condensation, freezing, rusting, and bond formation. That's the most important here. Most important here. Okay, this is exothermic. Okay, so if you recall back to our uh the chapter on change of state. Okay, I think it's chapter two. We have solid, liquid, and gas. All right. So we are talking about um. Let's focus on these three. Uh, these two, I mean, condensation and freezing. Condensation is when go, uh, gas goes back to liquid, am I right? Freezing is when liquid goes to solid. Okay, this is uh, freeze. This is uh, condense. Okay, and all these are exothermic reactions because to form liquid from gas, that means I move from gaseous state to liquid state, I lose, out, I lose heat, okay, to uh, get to liquid. And from liquid, I lose heat again to get solid. Okay, and that's freezing. Okay, so these are a few examples of exothermic reaction. Let's look at uh, endothermic reactions. 
So endothermic reactions are basically the opposite of uh, exothermic reactions. What do I mean? Now, heat taken in to break bonds is more than the heat given out from bond formation. Let me use the same example again. So I have AA uh, plus BB to give me two molecules of AB, uh, yeah, AB, AB. Okay. Uh, maybe I use different color now. Okay, or they might be the same because I, I don't remember what color I used just now, but just random colors. Okay, so um, for example, in the reactants, I used up, okay, change in H, I used up, uh, for example, 500, okay, 500 kilojoules per mole, okay, 500 kilojoules recall is to break the bonds here, okay, take away, this is the formula, right, change in H of uh, bonds broken minus bonds formed. So bonds form, uh, in this case, are the AB molecules. So heat taken in is more than. So for example, in this case, I have uh, 300 kilojoules per mole. Okay, this fulfills the criteria, right? Because heat taken in to break bonds, okay, is more than the heat given out to form bonds. So 500 is obviously more than 300. So what do I get? I get a net of 200 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so this one means that heat is absorbed from the surrounding and temperature decreases. Remember that we said in the previous, uh, the, the exothermic portion, the sign just denotes where the energy is coming from. So if it's negative, it's going out. So if it's uh, positive, what does it mean? It means that energy is coming in. So if I just do the reaction in a cup again, as uh, before, okay, this is my reaction happening here. And if I were to hold the cup, okay, while the reaction is going on, okay, I can feel that it becomes cooler. Why? Because all the energy around it, all the heat energy around the cup is being sucked into, okay, <laughs> in some sense, sucked into this reaction. Because this reaction needs more heat, okay, then, because uh, it's not enough heat. So it needs more heat to be absorbed from the surrounding. And that's why when it touches cup, it becomes cold. Okay, it's colder than it used to be, okay? And you might have experienced this in your lab as well. Uh, and that's because it's an exothermic reaction, okay? Basically, heat is absorbed from its surrounding now, and the temperature, okay, outside the reaction site decreases, okay? And that's what we mean. When you put your hands around it, it becomes cold. As opposed to exothermic, when you put your hands around it, it becomes hot, it becomes warmer. Uh, this one is because products form in exothermic reaction have more energy than its reactants, okay? This we'll talk about in energy profile diagram as well. Some examples are as follows. Dissolving some ionic compounds, okay, especially um, those with NH4 plus ammonium in it. Okay, usually they are endothermic. That means when you touch the cup, it is cold, okay, instead of being uh, room temperature. Uh, photosynthesis uh, as well, evaporation, melting, boiling, bond breaking. Okay, so bond breaking, this one, the first part, okay, it's uh, endothermic. That means it takes in heat. So using the solid liquid gas again, let me just do a quick recap. Okay, so just now we talk about this direction, right, from right to left. Now we are going forward, all right, because from solid to liquid, we know it's melting. From liquid to gas, we know it's boiling. Okay, and this one I think is more straightforward than the previous one because we know that to get from solid to liquid, we have to give it heat, right? We have to give the ice cube uh, more heat. That means we, for example, heat it up, okay, using external source of energy or we can just leave it open, okay? Because once it's temperature, um, reaches zero degrees Celsius, it will start to melt. Okay, that's what we mean. We are giving the, uh, this ice cube, in this case, heat. Okay, and that's why this ice cube is taking in heat, endothermic, okay, to become liquid. Also, li when it's in liquid phase, now it takes in heat again, okay, to become gas, boiling. Okay, and that's why endo is taking in heat, whereas exo is giving out heat. Okay, and that's why, uh, back to this, you will find it very cold. Okay, the cup being very cold. Okay, and that is all for exothermic and uh, endothermic. For the next part, we'll talk about uh, energy profile diagram.